So we previously saw that the Eastwood Mini Lathe is a capable little machine. Now it's time to test out its sibling, the Mini Mill. I actually need to bust open a crate. This is some legit Indiana Jones stuff here. This is gonna be interesting. Oh boy. Wonder how much this thing weighs because that that took some effort. Didn't catch that. They just dropped the fuse. Oh my goodness. Luckily I didn't step on it. While I set the mill up, I'll talk a bit again about the idea behind this video series. Pretty big wrench. You might be thinking at this point, you already have a lathe, why do you need a mill now? In general, the lathe spins the part and you move the tool into it. This lets you make precise cylindrical things very easily. But when it comes to the mill, the mill spins the tool and you move the part into it. This lets you make precise non-cylindrical shapes very easily as well as add features to those shapes. So, with this combo, I am much closer to being able to precisely make anything I'd ever want to in the shop. That is, if I can get this machine to work well. Now I need to tram the head, which basically means to get the spindle, the spinning tool part of the mill, square to the mill table where you clamp your part down. I'll zero it on this side, and then I'll swing it over. Looks like I'm about four thou deeper on this end. I think I might be able to get it better than that. Time to get the big wrench. So now I'm no longer at zero on the other side, so I've got to go back the other way a little bit. Right now it's zero and zero. Zero and zero. I didn't expect that to be so easy. Now I can set up the vise for holding work on the milling table. One thing to note, if you're in the market for a vise for a mini mill, you might be tempted to get the 4 inch version. It's not that much more expensive than the 3 inch. Why not just go all in and get the one that gets you a little more space? It's only another inch of space on your milling table, right? Well, no. Look at this chart. A 4 inch vise is 3 inches larger than the 3 inch vise in some dimensions. That 4 inch is a beast in comparison. I know this because I of course bought the 4 inch version initially. It was so big that I couldn't figure out how to keep it on the mill and safely take a photo of it. So you'll just have to trust me. Okay, what's going on here? Oh, it's those bolts. So these bolts are keeping me from turning the vise. So, I trim them up. There we go. Just barely. I'm again relying heavily on Blondie Hacks here. Her Mill Skills series documents one quick approach to doing this that she learned from Mr. Pete. So if you want to learn what I'm actually doing here, check out the links in the description. There we go. Cool. Cool. The mill is set up. Now I can test it out. 
As a first experiment, I'm gonna square up this piece of brass. It sounds like these machines can hit tolerances of plus or minus one thousandth of an inch, which means that if you measure one side of the block, it'll be within 0 0.001 of an inch on the other end of the block. So if we get that here, I think we have successfully set up this machine. That was close. On the Making It podcast, Jimmy DeResta talks a lot about how buying new versus used is about more than price. It's also about not having to spend time setting stuff up because the previous owner already did that for you. Well, with buying a used mill, you'd be doing the same setup stuff again anyway once you got it home. But I never considered that stuff like parallels, collets, etc., would essentially need prep time too. Kudos to the manufacturers for making sure this stuff is protected from rust, but expect some fun times to get stuff like wax paper and grease cleaned off everything. You can definitely feel a little bit of a burr there. I'm gonna try going slower and try some different lubricant for this second cut. That looks a lot better. I kind of varied my speed. And I think you can tell when I went the fastest at the end, yeah, that was too fast. But otherwise, I think the lubricant must have just made a huge difference. Yeah, you can see it looked really good for most of the way. And like when I started to lose it towards the end, that's when I started seeing marks. Nice. Safe to say that lube makes a big difference. We've got all four sides cut. Let's see how it measures up. About a thou difference end to end, horizontally. And about a thou vertically. I'm happy with that. Well, that was easy. Next up, it's time to make something useful with this thing. Thanks for watching.